Chuckload of Comics is brought to you by Cold War Games, creators of Squarriors, Fight Your Friends, and Lady Death Last Stand. For more information, visit coldwar.us. This week on Chuckload of Comics, first critic reviews are in for Toy Story 4, and they are glowing. We get our first plot details for the new John Krasinski, A Quiet Place 2, and Doctor Sleep. We got our first look at this Stephen King follow-up to The Shining. All that plus the results of this week's viewer poll right here on Chuck Loda Comics. Hey guys, welcome back to an all-new episode of Chuck Load of Comics. It's our Sunday Week in Review show. Sunday fun day. If you're new to the Chuck Load of Comics channel, welcome. Uh, click that subscribe button. We basically, every single Sunday, break down all the nerdy news, all the nerd headlines, the geek headlines, <laughs> everything that happened in the world of fandom in the past seven days. We break it down for you every single Sunday. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. We're glad to have you. So I was doing the rundown today. There's not a single comic book. <laughs> I realize there's not a single comic book in the show called Chuck Load of Comics. Chuck Load of Comics. There's not a single story about comic books. That is just sad. Or it's even our, comic book movies. Like it's, that's usually our in. <laughs> I know. We're just talking movies and trailers and, and reviews and all the great movie stuff that happened this week. But in an effort to not upset our <laughs> constituency, Shauna, what was your favorite comic book you read this week? I got to go with Catwoman. I thought it was awesome. I think Joelle Jones is doing a bang up job with her storylines. I love the characters, and yeah. it's just great. It's I haven't read book. it yet, but that's a beautiful art germ cover. Yeah. Love that cover. We've it been collecting pops. all the art germ covers for yeah. Catwoman. They're great. Yeah, if you're not reading the Joelle Jones <laughs> Catwoman, you really should. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, she doesn't illustrate it anymore, but she still writes it. Yep. Uh, but when she was illustrating it, it was phenomenal. Yeah. Well, my book of the week, right there on the table, continuing its run of my favorite <laughs> book every single time it comes out is Immortal Hulk it's also uh, by awesome. uh, Al Ewing. Oh my God, this is up to issue 19. This is probably the bloodiest, craziest issue of this really? entire 19 I run. Yet. Oh my God, it's by far <laughs> the best thing I've read all week. Oh my gosh. If you guys read Immortal Hulk, leave us a comment. I'm dying to see if you loved it half as much as I did. <laughs> I can't wait. It's reading that right incredible. Show. If you're not reading the Immortal Hulk run, you're missing out. Every single issue is solid gold. It's scary and gory, and the art's amazing, and the writing's right. amazing. It's taking you places I never knew an Incredible Hulk <laughs> book would take me. Right. <laughs> so anyway, guys, those are our comic book picks of the week. What did you read this week? Lead us, leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys are reading, what blew your hair back this week. So let's go ahead and get into this week's nerdy news. It is an entire <laughs> movie talk episode here on Chuckload of Comics. Nothing wrong with that. The biggest news Movie-related news story of the week, guys. Toy Story 4 comes out yes. next weekend. We uh, have our tickets. <laughs> we already have our tickets booked. You guys probably do, too. The reviews are in. People have seen it, and oh, my God. Stellar. The reviews are incredible. This it's thing is still holding a perfect score on un- Rotten Tomatoes. Unbelievable. That doesn't happen it. that often. Right? Uh, but what's even more amazing, in the Toy Story franchise, <laughs> probably the greatest trilogy of our age. Besides John Wick. <laughs> John Wick is right up there with everything Pixar has been doing. But right. Toy Story 1, after 15, 20 years, yeah. is still holding a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Toy Story 1 still has a perfect score. Wow. Toy Story 2, uh-huh. 100% on Rotten Tomatoes what? still. What about 3? 98%. No. Still <laughs> 98%. pretty amazing. One person didn't like That's Toy like Story That's like one 3. critic <laughs> said, I didn't like it. I don't get it. Uh, but yeah, man, of four movies That's insane. in a franchise, yeah. three of them still hold a 100% of Rotten Tomatoes. That is unheard of. Right? And it's rare that you get four movies, too. And yeah. then, like you said, to be that good, oh my gosh. It's I'm incredible. Excited. I cannot yeah. wait to see Toy Story 4 next weekend. But we don't have to wait to see what other people who have seen it. We're going to go ahead and read, in a completely non-spoiler way, uh, some of the reviews, some of the Twitter reactions to people who did see it. I think we've got like five of them I want to read. They're all glowing. Let's get right into it. The first one comes from Steven Weintraub, the guy who runs uh, Mm -hmm. Collider.com. Steve Frosty Weintraub wrote, A few things about Toy Story 4. The level of animation that Pixar has achieved in this film is astounding. Keanu Reeves is so awesome as Duke Kaboom. The theater we saw it in was a bit dusty, and I loved the entire movie. So well done. Absolutely recommended. Wow. Speaking of John Wick, Keanu Reeves is John in Toy Wick, Story 4. <laughs> Duke it. Kaboom, man. Duke Kaboom. What great casting. I'm so glad. Like I They've know. been doing all these press junkets, and it's so nice to see Keanu Reeves sitting up there with uh, 
Tom Hanks. And Tim, like, Tim, what's his nuts? And yeah. Tom Hanks. <laughs> Tim Allen. Tim <laughs> Allen. Um, so the next one comes from Rachel Page. Rachel Page wrote, For those worried about Toy Story 4, don't be. The movie is magic and delightful. It will also wreck your emotions just as much as the other three. So that's something to look forward to. Rachel was so excited, she went on to do another tweet. Uh, responding to her own tweet, she wrote, uh, For those wondering, I cried four times during Toy Story 4. Twice actually cry crying and twice crying because I was laughing so hard. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Sounds like this is a real depressing film. Yeah, it does. A lot sometimes of, these Pixar movies can be. Especially in the Toy Story franchise. Oh my god, know. Niagara Falls right? and, and Toy Story 2 and 3. What is going to happen in this movie? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little nervous. Let's see if Alicia Grasso gives us any more insight. She writes, <laughs> Toy Story 4 has an, has an ending as lovely and warm and heartbreaking is Toy Story 3. Oh, no. In between the genuine belly laughs, thanks Duke Kaboom, <laughs> is a story that has the heart that Pixar is known for. Loved it. More references wow. to Duke Kaboom by uh, Keanu Reeves and also just more just Niagara Falls. I'm People so are glad crying. Keanu Reeves is like making this huge comeback. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. We're living in an age. This is, this is Keanu Reeves' world, and we're just living in it. I love it. <laughs> uh, the next one comes from Jason Garasio. He writes, Toy Story 4 is a touching and moving addition to the franchise. Bring the tissues in all caps. Uh, you will fall in love with Forky and <laughs> Keegan-Michael Key and Jordan Peele. Steal the scene as these guys. Again, right? to Forky. 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 Forky is a spork, though. Why isn't Good point. he called Sporky? Why isn't he called Spoony? Spoony or Spoony? <laughs> Why did they decide on the fork part of the spork and not the spoon part of the I don't fork? I know. That's weird. Analyze that, yeah, people, yeah. and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. He does mention uh, Keegan Michael Key and Jordan Peele. And says they steal this. The they say they steal every scene they're in. That's so crazy. it's like they don't even run away with the whole movie, but when they're on screen, they crush. And you can see that from the trailers. <laughs> yeah. They tease them first before they teased anybody else. They have the little carnival ducky and bear or whatever. Bunny or yeah. <laughs> whatever. They look hilarious. I, I can't wait to see them on screen. That's gonna be great. Uh, this final one comes from uh, Rob Keys. Rob writes. Toy Story 4 is super satisfying and features some of the funniest and most emotional moments in the franchise. It leans into new characters quite a bit and will surprise you by the end. And yes, there are some great moments during the credits. None at the end, though. Uh, so uh, That's a good note. So stick around for the credits, <laughs> but there's not a post credit scene, but the credits, I guess, are going to show some fun stuff while the credits are rolling. I mean, didn't they do that in one movie where they did bloopers? That was so funny. I loved that. One of the Toy Stories during the credits. It did was they? Like, yeah, it was bloopers, like Buzz Lightyear messing up his line and Woody messing up his Oh, that's hilarious. Line. I don't remember that. <laughs> I do remember in uh, Happy Time Murders when they did all this behind-the-scenes stuff oh, with yeah. the puppets. If you haven't seen Happy Time Murders, watch the post credit. Watch, watch the credits of Happy Time Murders. It wasn't the greatest movie, but the credits were absolutely hysterical. So, guys, we want to know, how excited are you for Toy Story 4? Do you think they needed a Toy Story 4? People so were worried crazy. because it's like a perfect trilogy. Yeah. And then they just decided to add a new one on there. So cool. And what do you think? Will there be a Toy Story 5? Because apparently... This is killing it. People are loving number four. Well, even Tom Hanks had said when we went and saw Tom Hanks live in Mm -hmm. Chicago talking, he had said he got the script for Toy Story 4 and he was like, no, we're not doing another one of these. And then he was very adamant about not doing it, but he read the script and he said, okay, I'm in. He said he cried when he was reading the final. (laughs) Something happens at the end of this movie because even Tom Hanks, when we saw him, (laughs) said that he got to the end of his read Mm -hmm. and he was just waterworks. Oh, no. Get excited. (laughs) I think someone's going to break Forky in half oh or something. No. Oh no, I know exactly. If you would have asked me 10 years ago if I would have been in my 30s and pre-bought a ticket to Toy Story 4, I would have been, been like, like, no way. Hmm, no, that's not, that doesn't <laughs> sound cool. Do. You know, you get more in touch with your emotions the older I you guess. get. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get in the next uh, story of the day, guys. Quiet Place. Probably my favorite movie of 2018. Favorite independent movie of 2018. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're right. Non-comic uh, book related movie of 2018. Yes, yes. Infinity War was my favorite <laughs> movie of 2018. This is my favorite quiet movie oh, of 2018. John Krasinski directed movie. Of exactly. Big yeah. shout out to the guy <laughs> sitting next to me in the theater that wouldn't shut up the whole time. You oh, know who you are. Fun. Really appreciate that, man. That was really awesome. That really made that re- made the movie for me. Still loved it. <laughs> uh, so everybody's been kind of wondering, A, you know, will we get A Quiet Place 2? We okay. already know that it is coming. John Krasinski is returning to uh, direct, direct it. it. Not going to be in it. <laughs> no spoilers, but there's reason. pretty obvious reasons he's not going to be in A Quiet Place 2. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen it yet, what's wrong with you? Uh, but everybody's kind of wondering, you know, will you? Will this be an origin story? Uh-huh. Is it going to take place maybe in another place in the world? Yeah. 
lot of, uh, dare Questions. I say, kind of science silence about like the plot <laughs> of this film. Nobody really knows. Dun, dun, dun. Well, we now got our very first uh, sort of details uh, mm. from Brian Tyree Henry, who's in Quiet Place 2. He sat down with The Observer and he did an interview and he left this really amazingly awesome comment. Uh, Brian said, we'll see more of that family continuing to survive and finding out that they're not the only ones. And I think that we're also going to get a few answers to the origins yes. of where and how this whole thing happened. I think that people want to know that. He went on to write that, uh, but I think you're just going to see another side of it. More of humanity that survived this thing in the next story. That's okay, Shauna, I want you to, like, what, what in his very long comment that I didn't read very well. <laughs> you're just uh, fine. I'm not a good reader, okay? And I do read a lot of comics. That's why you're so pretty. Yeah, oh God, we went there. Um, what stands out uh, most in, um, in the Brian's origin comics? story? Yes. Like, where did these things come from? Are they aliens? Are they monsters? Did we birth them? Like, I don't know exactly. what happened. That I was the know that was the big happened. question in, in Quiet Place. Like, yeah, and how did they find out that it was noise that, that was, attracted them? Exactly. Like, I I want to know the origin story. I'm curious. Are they are they aliens? Are they from another planet? Yeah, don't did know. they did they come up from underground? Are they are they kaiju? monsters like Godzilla yeah, have they always been no here clue. where do they come from and also again like where what's going on in, in other parts yeah. of, of the planet like is it, what's going on in New York with, where it's a really noisy city right I want to see these things come <laughs> and tear through a really noisy city like Chicago mm -hmm. and just have a feeding frenzy oh man show me that or save that for Quiet Place 3 I don't know <laughs> I think he hit the nail on the head. Everything he said, I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> so I am really, bring it on, man. I'm ready. I'm really glad to see that the um, Emily Blunt, that the Abbott family from the original Quiet mm -hmm. Place is going to return older, wiser uh, in this because the ending of that uh, movie was really, really cool. <laughs> Emily Blunt gets gets pretty hardcore at the end of that <laughs> she film. She gets raw. So it's Emily Blunt, uh, Millicent. <laughs> and her daughter. Yeah, Millicent Simmons and uh, Noah Jupe all returning. The little deaf girl. They're all returning. That's awesome. In, in Quiet Place 2. Set to come out, uh, what, 2020? Yeah, I think they said tentative or expected release date March 2020. March 2020. Yeah, expected. Get excited. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. No, oh my God. I can't wait. And I'm glad Krasinski's <laughs> coming back to, to direct. Yeah, well, it was his baby. I mean, I He was going to do it. So. He just yeah. was waiting for him to back up the money truck. And they did. <laughs> and they did. A, money, a movie that didn't take that much to make, I bet you this one's going to have a much higher budget. And they get two paychecks for these movies. Right? <laughs> Always marry your co-star. Right? Or That's what hire, I did. Or, that's right. See? Or at least... Like, cast them in a role in your movie. <laughs> Good call, Krasinski, you sneaky devil, you. Uh, so, guys, let's go ahead and move on to our final story of the day. Yes. Uh, this leads directly into our viewer poll. Mm -hmm. Every single Friday on our Instagram page, we pose a viewer poll question to you guys and uh, ask you what you think about any one particular topic, a nerd topic of the week. This week's topic was the Doctor Sleep trailer. Did you see it? And did you like it? I was mm -hmm. really surprised Me by too. the result. It, it, it <laughs> clocked in at 60 40. 64, so that was kind of positive. 60% of you guys really uh, liked it. 40% of you guys actually <laughs> didn't like it. One of you guys actually said no with exclamation points, which what? I don't understand at all. Oh, my gosh. So, guys, this trailer, we've been looking forward to this movie for a while. It comes yes. out this year. It comes out November 8th. Shauna, I'm going to throw this one to you because you're the <laughs> Dr. Sleep expert. You've read the novel. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to kind of break down. what What's the basic plot sure. of Dr. Sleep, and what did we see in the trailer that oh sort of like stuck with the God. book. Give us, give us the dirt, Shauna. I was so excited seeing this trailer. To your point, I'm going to start off with the plot because it was a teaser trailer and you didn't get any of the plot from this trailer. So They call it a teaser trailer. It's two and a half minutes long. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> no. continue. But really, you didn't get much of the plot to, right. in the trailer. So, like, obviously, young Danny Torrance is just horribly distraught after the events that happened at Overlook Hotel. Mm -hmm. So what does he Rightly do? Rightly so. Yeah, he, he grows up and becomes an alcoholic like any normal person, right? Just like his dad. Just like his dad. Just like his old man. He's got to suppress all that craziness that's going on in his head so he becomes an alcoholic. Well, he, he decides in his 30s that he wants to sober up because he shouldn't be drunk all the time. <laughs> so he sobers up gets a job at a hospice center and he realizes as he's sobering up his abilities his shine is coming back and then he's able to actually assist these hospice patients in passing like when they're near death he's able to comfort them and help them transition to wherever they're going peacefully which okay. is how he gets the nickname Dr. Sleep I get it so when he was yeah. drinking it kind of suppressed his, his shine yes. ability and then he said why did he decide to quit drinking just because he realized he was ruining his, his life. life. Yeah. <laughs> he probably shouldn't drink his He's life. Starting away. to get weird liver spots. He's like, yeah. you know what? I'll talk to the dead. It's, it's not worth all this. <laughs> exactly. I want to be pretty and psychic. 
Okay. But of course, you know, he gets he starts getting these abilities back, and as you see in the trailer, the he's somebody's trying to talk to him through the chalkboard, and it, yeah. that person that's talking to him is the girl that we see in the trailer. Her name's Abra. She also has the shining, oh. and she actually shines more intensely than Danny. Okay, so, so she's like, yeah. she's the one leaving the comments. She's on the, the wall. one talking to him. I the was totally board. wondering that. Who's yeah. leaving these comments? Like, is it his dad? Is it is no, it some weird it's, ghost it's from another Abra. dimension? She just she the little shines, girl on the bench that yes. he's talking to is Abra. Yep. She shines so strongly that she just she found Danny because he lives close by and she starts talking to him the chalkboard. Awesome. Um, but what you also see in the chalkboard is murder come through, and that's the evil ghosts from Overlook also because they never left Danny. That's Even though okay. the hotel burned down, those everything still haunts him. I want to interrupt himself. you for just a second because sure. I noticed that, I mean, I noticed in the trailer, because <laughs> in, in the original uh, Stanley Kubrick, mm-hmm. Stephen King uh, movie, it was, he. The, mur- Red Rum is written on the wall, and when right. you look at it, or on the door, technically, and when you look at it in the mirror, it says murder. No! In the trailer, it's flipped. Mm-hmm. So it's murder, but when you look in the mirror, it says red, red rum. rum. Is that Does that have any sort of importance in the, <laughs> I don't, the book? I don't think so. <laughs> no? It's just a neat thing to throw in there? Yeah, probably. Is that in the book? Like the fact uh, that it's murder and then he sees red rum? I hate to say it. I don't really remember okay. if that well, particularly is in the book. But okay, continue. So what we also see in the trailer is this group called the True Knot. True Knot. And they're led by Rose the Hat, who you see. She's this pretty lady wearing a hat, Nice right? hat, by the way. I know. That was a beautiful hat. Talking to people who like hats. And this is coming you know? from somebody who knows her hat. <laughs> okay. Well, True what knot. this group True Knot does is they're actually like these immortal beings, but how they get their immortality is they kidnap, torture, and murder people that shine. What? Because when that happens, people that shine, when they're tortured and death, they release this essence that in the the true knot call it steam which you see in the trailer you, you see do. rose the hat leaning over a tortured individual and she's inhaling the steam actually she exhaled the steam mm. if you watch the trailer watch the really? trailer again she actually exhales the steam oh, i watched the trailer like four times so i don't understand how that works i'm sure it has something to do but she uh. yeah she actually breathes the steam out so but anyway so steam Steam. Sticking with the steam thing, I, I hate to keep interrupting because this is bringing up all kinds of cool questions because I don't know anything about the story. Uh, in the title treatment, at the mm-hmm. end of the when it, when Doctor Sleep comes up, it's all steamy and mm. smoky. Steam, if you didn't know, is what happens when you superheat uh, water and it turns from a liquid state to a vapor state. Shauna, continue. Thank you for that science lesson. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So basically, how all of this ties together is the Rose, the Hat, and the True Knot group. They realize that they there they come to be familiar with Abra, who is now the strongest, most strongest person they've ever come in contact to shines. Abra. Oh, let me stop you again. Yeah. Abra. Because in the trailer, she says, she talks about how she has magic. She has yeah. magic. And her name's Abra, like Abracadabra. Yeah. Does that have anything cute. to do in the, in the book? I think it's just a coincidence. Is her actual name Abra? <laughs> her or name's just Abra. Goes by Abra. No, her name's Abra. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about this amazing book. So yeah, they just that's how they the the true knot wants to go after Abra and kidnap her and instead of killing her, they want to keep her and torture her indefinitely to continuously release steam so that they will always be immortal. That's smart. Yeah. So then of course Danny's befriended. Why her, so kill why why to... kill the cow when you can get the milk for exactly. free? I think it's the, is that how is that, is that how it goes? <laughs> or Something marry like the that. cow? Don't kill your wife because you can milk her for free. Anyway. That, that sounds right. <laughs> so she's the strongest. Is she stronger yeah. than Danny? Yep, and she's stronger than Danny. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, do the Abra, not the Abra people, the, uh, what are they called? The true True-not. Not. Uh-huh. Are they aware of Danny's presence? I don't think they were until recently because he was, he was drinking to suppress his... What's wrong with that? Good I mean, call. geez. I know, right? <laughs> so. I like to hide from stuff drinking also. <laughs> But yeah, this this movie is going to be amazing. And what makes it even more amazing is that it's written, directed, and edited by Mike Flanagan, who yes. brought us Haunting of Hill House. Oh my God, the guy that did Haunting of Hill House directed I, every episode of Haunting yeah, of Hill House. Every episode, wrote every episode, edited every episode. You like, got my money, he, man. I know. Take I just my got money. Goosebumps. I want to buy these tickets now. He also <laughs> wrote and directed the movie Oculus. Yes. Have you never seen Oculus? It came Great out about movie. five years ago. Mm-hmm fantastically trippy horror movie yeah. about mirrors and like ghosts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Check out Oculus. That might have been his directorial debut. Maybe. And, oh my God, if you haven't watched Haunting Hill House. Uh, best television haunted series ever. Maybe even like one of the best movies if you consider that I that agree. But, so let's stay on Dr. Sleep here because I have a, one more question. Well, maybe a couple more questions for you. Uh, in the trailer, you actually see 
old Danny, uh, played by Ewan McGregor, uh-huh. obviously, uh, going back to the Overlook Hotel. Yeah. You see him walking into their little apartment. It's all dirty and grimy. You see mm-hmm. him going back into room 237. You see the lady in the shower. Mm-hmm. You see him walking down the hallway. Is any of that in... Is, is he actually going back to the Overlook no, Hotel? No, it's all just the hotel trying to drag him back. I mean, you, you saw in the original Stanley Kubrick movie yes. how I love that Jack, movie. like visioned all these things that weren't happening it's kind of the oh, okay. same kind so of the he, same he doesn't thing. actually go back to no. the overlook hotel because uh-uh. in the book they blow up the overlook right. but in the stanley kubrick version <laughs> interesting little side note mm-hmm. i want to mention to all you guys um mike flanagan mm-hmm. who was writing and directing this film uh he knew he couldn't make it unless he had obviously the blessing of stephen king but he also wanted the blessing of stanley kubrick who was passed away but right. so he went to the stanley kubrick estate, uh, estate like stanley kubrick foundation and he said, I'm not doing this movie unless I have your approval because that's the movie everybody's most familiar with. Sure. Uh, Stephen King notoriously hates that film uh-huh. and doesn't like Stanley Cooper for what he did with his source material. But he wanted both because that's the movie he's going to be referencing most. Yeah. Uh, so because you see in the trailer, the Overlook Hotel, you yep. see Danny riding his little big wheel down the hallway, you see the blood in the All elevators, the you see the little girls. Yep. So he, he, and he got the approval. So yeah. he got the approval from the Kubrick estate. And, and from Stephen, Stephen King. King. Not that only is a, Stephen King's approval, but Stephen King's an executive producer yes, on this movie. So. That is incredibly important little detail oh, for all you fans of The Shining. Also, last little side note I noticed because I was like Googling <laughs> this. Every single, all those shots that you see from uh-huh. the original film were reshot. Those aren't, except for yeah. the, the bloody elevator. Uh-huh. Those are all reshots. Uh, they weren't. They didn't actually use the footage. They I they reshot the that. footage. It looked a little bit. Brighter. Except for the bloody elevator. The bloody yeah. the blood coming through the hallway is actually taken from the Stanley Kubrick That's film. That's cool. <laughs> but like him riding down the yeah de- riding down the hallway on his big wheel, totally reshot. re-shot. They found I... another little kid with a '70s haircut. <laughs> well, the movie stars Rebecca Ferguson, who you know from the Mission Impossible films, mm-hmm. Ewan McGregor, obviously, and Jacob Tremblay. Okay. Who was the little kid in the movie Room? Nice. And he was in something else recently. I can't think of what it was. I, don't I know we talked about it on the Chuckle. He's probably the new little Danny. You think? That they shot all. Is there a little with. Danny like with speaking roles? No. Okay. I mean, if they flash flashback, back, maybe yeah, because they do flash back to Halloran, like because I was going to ask you about. Okay. He doesn't die in the book. New question: <laughs> Is Mr. Halloran? in the book is he gonna be in the movie he is he's actually very heavy in the first parts of the books because like we were just saying he didn't die in the book right. the shining and he actually goes on to kind of assist danny throughout the rest of halloran's life because he does die from old age later on yeah but he helps danny with his powers and stuff side note if life. you guys haven't read the shining <laughs> Stephen, it's my favorite stephen king book it's so good. is the shining it's spectacular and mr halloran does not get the axe through the gut he actually yeah. lives and the book ends with him and Danny sitting on a dock Yeah, and I can't remember exactly how it ends but he <laughs> explains something about Shining and I think they have a vision of him all grown up so it's like the very last few pages of The Shining lead right into Dr. Doctor Sleep. Sleep and that's yeah. why they wanted to make a Dr. Sleep movie because yeah. the ending of the book that was written way back when totally teases a sequel mm-hmm. that everybody's been screaming for so all yeah. you people that think this is just a cash grab because of the success <laughs> of It I know. It's not. This it's, is a New York Times best-selling novel yeah. that fans of Stephen King were screaming for. Absolutely. Like I think that's where the 40% hatred came from for the trailer is because people are looking at, oh, they redid Pet Cemetery. They redid exactly. it. We're just going to do a cash grab and make a Shining 2. No, this was a book, <laughs> and it was a great book. Very popular book. Very popular. Very good read. Like One of the best Stephen King novels ever, and like... They're making a movie of it, and the movie looks great. And the movie comes out November 8th. Guys, get your tickets as soon as it goes on sale. (laughs) Check it out, guys. Well, that's our whole story, guys. Get excited about Toy Story 4, A Quiet Place 2, and, of course, Dr. Sleep. If you haven't seen the trailer yet, you probably aren't even watching this video, but check out the trailer. (laughs) Now that you know a little bit more about the story, thank you, Shauna. No problem. I think you'll appreciate the trailer a lot more. (laughs) So, guys, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. If this is your first time to check out comics, click that subscribe button. We're here every single Sunday breaking down all the cool, nerdy stuff that happened in the past seven days every single week. It's a commitment we make every single week for right, you guys, for the you. viewers. So take a second, click the subscribe button, join the Chuck Load of Comics family, <laughs> and we'll see you here next Sunday. Have a fantastic week. Shauna, thank you for all the insight. Not a problem. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next Sunday. <laughs>